I was just going to start talking about, um, like, John, John Stamos. I know John Stamos. Like, his role on the show, he had his own radio show called The Rush Hour Renegades. I didn't know that. I don't know. I just thought it was really cool. It was like a podcast, but on the radio. Yep. Ah. Uh, yeah. Like him and Joey Gladstone did it together. He, Joey was the comic relief, and yeah, Jesse was the music man with the hair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... He had a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> man, that dude slayed a ton of ass back in the day. Dude, his hair. Okay, now, let's take a trip down fictitious memory lane, everybody. <laughs> if you grew up in a different era, all right, like if you grew up in a different era, mm -hmm. what do you think would be your style? Because all of a sudden right now, like there's a craze coming back. Like the, the, the trend today is a little bit of mullet, a little, little bit of retro shit going on, mm -hmm. and everybody thinks it's like the first time they've seen it because a lot of these young kids don't really understand like it was something big in the eighties. Yep. Meanwhile, they still don't know nothing about no eighties music. Mm. But <laughs> if you if you grew up in a different era, what would it be and what would be your style? Like me personally, me, I'd probably grow up in the seventies. Mm -hmm. Like I'd be born in the sixties, grow up in the seventies. Yeah. And my style would be fucking similar to what it is now. Probably wear tight jeans. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'd have the hair, though. I don't know. I, I mean, I do have a thick head of hair. I, I, don't know. A little I guess, like, hair. I would be, like, I was born in 88, so I was young through the 90s. Yeah. You're 90. So, like, too, I, I would I would kind of choose to be an adult in the 90s or, like, the, eight, the 80s into 90s. I'm just going back now to yeah okay to, then that's to I, I would be yeah I, w I guess I would have been born in the late fifties grew mm. up in the seventies like my old man right because that's was my old man's time because he was born in fifty eight yeah so he he was a teenager in the seventies he graduated I think seventy seven yeah seventy six <clears throat> he graduated yeah you're a teenager in the seventies fuck yeah I'll take that. Yeah, like 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 dazed and confused style. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's badass. I'd be I'd I'd be flannel, doing some type of construction work. Like in uh, between, like classic rock and but before disco type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I have uh, like a straighter, wavier hair. Like if it was long, I could and I could see it being a little wavier because everybody in my family, like all my sisters, have thick wavier hair i don't have curly hair mm -hmm. but i don't know if i'd have like the long hair or if i'd have like the I don't, i'm trying to think of 70 styles hair everyone had a little bit longer hair for oh a yeah period. no matter their thick curly straight thin. yeah froze my yep. dad had an afro yep i'd probably have an afro maybe tighter on the sides like a jerry curl like ac slater type thing mm. yeah it really wasn't too tight on the sides, was it? No, I guess not. Like tight today is to the skin. Yeah. Whereas back it's then, just tighter than the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. I probably would choose that if I grew up. If I grew up in the seventies, wasn't like an eighties in the teenager. All I think is hot tub time machine. Yeah. Man, it was a wild time. A lot of drugs though. Mm -hmm. A lot of drugs. Easy to get wrapped up in that shit. Like back to Full House, like I liked how Jesse Katsopoulos dressed. Oh yeah, in the early episodes, in the later episodes, mm -hmm. I mean, he'd always sport a leather vest with just about anything. Again, that dude slayed ass. So it was like, I mean, the hair too. Isn't it crazy how the size of their heads back then looked much bigger? Yeah, like it looked like they had like slimmer bodies and these massive fucking heads. Bob Saget's head looked gigantic. Well, he's a large man. He is a large man, but the hair. He's, yeah, he's a. Literally an icon. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It was. Yeah. Man, rest yeah. in peace, Bob Saget. Big fan. Yeah, me too. Big fan. I loved his cameos in Entourage. Bro. Hilarious. He, so I was watching this, uh, <laughs> like whenever he passed, like there was all these things all over YouTube with Bob Saget because I was watching some of his stuff and it just, I got bombarded with Bob Saget stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how uh, he's out with his daughters 
okay? And this is after his cameo in How High. He's like, I was asked to do the cameo in How High. And it was, and he's like, yeah, it's funny, it's it's good. He's like, you know, no longer full house and doing his own thing on the road. And he's, that's his, his, uh, it's actually hit kind of a style, like be a little fucked up. Yeah. And he's like, I'm out with my kids walking on the streets, you know? And he's like, and all of a sudden, a car full of fucking younger kids. Uh, younger guys, teenagers, early 20s, college, high school, pull up and go, hey, did you ever suck dick for coke? <laughs> He's like, I'm with my daughters. <laughs> and I'm like, that's fucking funny, dude. <laughs> that is awesome. He the, the first I ever heard or seen Bob Saget outside of Full House was on the Howard Stern show. Oh, really? I was I was working with my dad one day and he was always on like Howard loved yeah. Bob Saget oh, yeah. and we were listening and I'm like dad I'm like I was like like Bob Saget like from Full House and he's like that's him I was like there's no way that's the dad of the year and he's like that's Bob Saget I was like he's a little vulgar yeah he's I'm like no shit apparently he caught a lot of shit for that like Ton. both sides people were stupid pumped mm -hmm. and people were really upset and it's kind of at the same time like listen like that show is the most wholesome show of all time that somehow took real life things and literally dumbed them down to like not a big deal, but a big deal, mm -hmm. like a big deal for the show. Like in real life, like that doesn't occur. <laughs> like the show is so heartfelt. Like, do you think he was still himself like in between takes and like on set or like, did, do... did he hold that honest all American dad? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, he said this. He said uh, whenever him and him and uh, Jesse, they'd hang out. John Stamos, they'd hang out yeah. outside of there. They were friends. Yeah. He's like, we would go. We'd go out to restaurants together. And he's like, I'll never forget the one time we went and take a piss. He's like, we go into the bathroom and like, there's this guy like, <laughs> like, looked, and then they would be in there and they would just start talking like they were still on the show at the urinals. <laughs> Like, they would start talking about the kids and yeah. everything, and people would be, he was like, we did it, it was a fucking riot. <laughs> that is really funny. Was, how funny would that be? That's something we would do for sure. Oh, yeah. I'd love, I, I, I think that, I mean, if you're in that position and you are that famous, like, you're an icon. Like, <laughs> you're could, an icon. I could just hear the combos there. Oh, yeah. It was, it was, uh, it's got to be a good time. Mm -hmm. But, uh mm. I'd say I'd be a 70s teenager. Mm -hmm. That's where I'd have liked to have grown up. But then again, if I became an adult in the 80s, it might have been a bad time. Yeah. Yeah, George Young stuff. Yep. It's so wild. You'd be, you'd be a little bit of a different businessman. I would be. I don't know if I'd still be alive. <laughs> might be in prison. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Shane? You have any uh, genres, music genres, or just things you like... Uh, I'd go a little outside the box of something I, I don't do now. I'd go 1920s, mm. Mm. Tom Shelby style, and just chain smoke six. You'd have to kill people, too. And kill people, yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. That, damn it, I wanted to change mine. I forgot how cool that era was. Oh, dude, you had to be one hard motherfucker. You'd have to be one hard motherfucker. That show's so awesome. Peaky it blinders. is a, an amazing show. Yeah. Like, it, 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 whenever it comes down to it, like back then, like you were, you're building cities. Like cars and are. automobiles weren't even built yet. No, no, it's a whole like, everything was different. Yeah, I just would like to live in an era where you don't have things we have, but oh. not like go medieval. Like I don't think I'd. I mean, if I'd go medieval, I'd go like, Jon Snow. Doesn't exist. I'd go yeah, like I mean, just on existed. the brink of electric. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Before the light bulb. For Edison. <laughs> For Tommy. Tommy. Side of the... <laughs> One of my favorite historians. Or ben. Ben flew the kite. <laughs> yeah, he did. You know what's funny is, is back then, like now, all of a sudden, there's all this corruption coming out about these fucking guys back then. How they didn't actually invent these things; they were just rich dudes that took all the credit for everything. Have you heard about these things? Yeah. And it's kind of crazy because it's like that just means that like the time of corruption, like corruption will never stop. The human, uh, fucking humans will always, always look to level up in every fucking way possible, even if it means undercutting and fucking people over. Mm -hmm. It is crazy how that is. 
corruption will always exist. Power is just something that uh, part of humanity just craves. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at today. It doesn't stop, whether it was back then or now. Just crazy. Yeah, I mean, there's no way Ben Franklin, like, invented that many different things. No, I mean, it's took like... all the credit. Bro, it's... I'm um, <laughs> fucking liar. It's like fucking... Uh, did you ever hear Bill Burr go off about Steve Jobs? Oh, he doesn't no, like him? No. <laughs> it's the fucking funniest thing in the world. <laughs> Bill Burr's such a prick. I love him. It's like, he is who I wish I could be. Uh, but he's he goes off about Steve Jobs. He's like, yeah, fuck him. He's like, he didn't do all that shit. <laughs> He's like, he just has, he just goes out in his fucking outfit on there. He's like, and here it is. He's like, all this shit. And he's like, no, he went and told his fucking team, put all my playlists on that little device. He's like, that's all he did. He didn't do anything. Like he goes off on his fucking hilarious. But uh, yeah, no, I think it, I think that probably exists still to, still to today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but back then, you know, if you watch, uh, uh, like, Adeline was doing it for history class, like, Building America. It was on the History Channel. She was watching a bunch of different things, doing all the research for how America was built. Bro, it's it's intense. Fucking savages. Savages. Mm -hmm. yeah, you get all these people to take... I mean, not that they take credit, but are given credit. Like, almost like Henry Ford, when he created the car. Do you actually think that he was the only person that helped create, like, an engine? No. The first engine? No. There's many people, but his name... He might have had the most money or he had the most pull or whatever it was. Yeah. And his name is now Ford. It's Would crazy. See every day. I would love to know the truth about it all. Yeah. You know? Henry yeah. Henry Ford. Hank. Hanky. What about Pocahontas? You think she really led those people? Like, well, you know, whoever it was? Probably Lewis and Clark. Probably just sleeping with him. Probably. <laughs> or they were raping her. Yeah. But... <laughs> I didn't think about that. But it, yeah, it might have been the other way around. That makes more sense now. Yeah. <laughs> Mystery solved. All that was like sheer like luck and stuff. It. Uh, I, I mean, it's just a like pioneering, like going out to the west. You didn't really know where you're going. No. Fuck no. That was why they called it exploring. I know, but <laughs> they're just going out. They there. Act like they knew exactly where they were going, where they were settling down. It just stopped. And then Columbus day. founded America. Who got him here? I want to know the captain's name. Or was he the captain? I think he was the captain. Well, who was actually... I am, I am the captain. Who was steering the ship? It was me. I am the captain. I'm the captain now. No, I think his, like... I think the slaves, drew, like, pretty much drove the boat. I don't... That's what that... The Irish. The Irish. Irish. <laughs> uh, you know, there's... Uh, we were talking about movies... And movies that could be made today and couldn't be scenes of certain movies wouldn't be allowed to be made today. Mm -hmm. All this wild shit. I still can't believe that nobody, nobody touches Blazing Saddles on TV. Like not one news channel, not one thing even brings it the fuck up. Nope. Blazing Saddles is one of the wildest, most iconic comedies of I think it was the 70s mm -hmm. with Mel Brooks. Dude was an animal. It was wild as fuck. It was funny. But, like, it's just mm -hmm. that will never be made. Nor is it talked about. Like, it's mm -hmm. one movie that's not even like, mm -mm. nobody even fucking touches it. Have you ever seen Blazing Saddles? I've never, never seen Blazing Saddles. You've never heard of it? No. See, I've heard of it. I just never watched it. Okay. You guys got to watch it. What's it on? Probably nothing. The internet. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to. You have to dig, dig it deep. up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you're. It's not gonna be on Netflix. <laughs> it's not on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely not on Amazon Prime. I wouldn't think. <laughs> uh, it, it might be. I don't know. It's on oh. HBO Max. Ah, oh, no shit. Yep. They have all this good shit. Peacemaker, great TV series. If anybody wants to watch it, <clears throat> I'm I'm all for that. It's John Cena. He's it's fucking, fucking awesome. Weird. It is a weird show. He's a weird fella. I like him now a lot as an actor. I'm not a big fan of John Cena. I like him now ever since Peacemaker. That yeah. really set it off for me. I don't know. Yeah, if you didn't like him in the WWE or any of his movies, Peacemaker's Red changes your mind. Redemption. Yeah. It's really good. He's a phenomenal dancer. <laughs> a really good dancer. 
Super coordinated. Yeah. Very choreographable. Is that a word? Yeah, like coachable, but in dance. In dance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Nope, not watching it. Kind of pushes the envelope, too. Like a little bit racist, a little bit fucked up, a little bit of everything in there. Mm. What? Yeah. Yeah. Really? I was surprised for a brand new show. I'm like... So they push the envelope with the show? Yeah. Right off the bat, first five minutes. Yeah, like any... Ad- but it's a com- it's co- it's comedic, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Any adult that accidentally let their kid watch it because it's a superhero movie... Are fucked like, up. Oh, fuck. Like, if they let them watch the first episode, you're fucked. Yeah. What is that? Oh, huh. You know what? You're shaking oh, his leg. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm done now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a bird outside. I thought something was squeaking. I was like, what the fuck is that? I didn't realize that. <laughs> He's over there going to mile a fucking minute. <laughs> He's over there jerking one off. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> I swear I'm not. That was quite the velocity. <laughs> it sounded fast. That was funny. Oh, fuck. Well, everybody, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the HWMF Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Furst, here with my intersexual life mate, Bob. Good eye. And Shane. Hi. And Tristan. Hello. Yeah, new guy over there. Yeah, been here for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Quiet, silent. Eight months today. No shit. Eight months? You've been here for eight months. Today's the exact day. Eight months. Yeah. Not that you're counting I feel or anything. Like it's been way. I started June second. Nice. Thought you started like like a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. It's already been eight months. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. We're, we're already into the second month of the year. February. Today's Groundhog's Day. Oh, that bastard. Yeah. I was telling Adeline this morning, I was fucking with her when I was taking her bus stop. And I was like, today's Groundhog's Day. She's like, yeah. I'm like, you're such a fucking teenager. <laughs> and I was like, you know, uh, if Phil sees his shadow, eight more months, or eight more weeks, or six more weeks of winter. And then I was like, but if he doesn't, six weeks till spring. And she's like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And just looks at me dead, and I'm like, you have a good day, sweetheart. She got out of the truck, and I'm like, fuck my life, dude. I was like, teenager just, fucking through and through. She's trying to talk to you. Yeah. You she's know, like, before you head out. <laughs> she's like, that's the dumbest. That's the stupidest thing I've ever I guess heard. it's the same thing, right? It is the same yeah. fucking thing. It makes no sense. I didn't that's... realize that till right now. Yeah. She's just like, fuck you. And I'm like, you don't watch Groundhog's Day, and I fucking hate you. I wonder how old Phil is now. Dude, I was just about to ask that. Is oh, that... he's definitely like third generation by now. Do you actually think that's still Phil? No. They replaced him. Oh, they replaced him at least a dozen times. Punks yeah. and Tony Phil. Yeah. I grew I I went to IUP, so Indiana University of Pennsylvania. It's like fucking thirty minutes from Punksy. I drove right through there. Never seen it before. Quite uh small town. Old school small town. Very yep. It's crazy that whenever you go up there and you see how that movie, Groundhog's Day, was filmed with Bill Murray, and it's in Punxy, and then you drive through Punxy, and you're like, fuck, this is where they filmed that movie. Mm-hmm. Small town. It looks the same. <laughs> yes. So I just looked this up. I looked up Punks Tony Phil. Apparently, Ohio has their own groundhog called Buckeye Chuck. Fuck him. And he actually did not see a shadow. <laughs> I think it's just where the sun was. You know? <laughs> Ohio just gets it wrong every time. Fuck them. <laughs> Buckeye Chuck, you cheating <laughs> bastards. You can't just create your own fucking groundhog. No. What are you doing? You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> and like, like Chuck is more of like a woodchuck name. Yeah, get a beaver, douchebags. <laughs> they probably got confused. They couldn't even tell the difference between a groundhog and a beaver. <laughs> fucking amateurs. Well, we just lost all of our Ohio viewers. <laughs> Fuck you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> all seven of them. <laughs> That's still my favorite question from the answer to the internet. Would you rather have a billion dollars and never leave the state of Ohio? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. That'd be tough, did it man. legit say Ohio or did you put that in there? No, it legit says Ohio. Oh, yeah, Ohio. no, well, Barstool hates Ohio, too. Yeah. They fucking, because uh, Michigan. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the El Presidente is a fucking giant Michigan fan, so he fucking hates Ohio State. It's just Ohio State that people absolutely despise. That's really what it is. Whenever we lived in Dayton, uh, <clears throat> like, 
people well, you'd watch it was only an hour from Columbus so you'd see everybody driving to the games on Saturday and it was mayhem it's fucking crazier than Steeler games Ohio mm. State games make fucking Steeler games look like a fucking breakfast brunch crazy they're fucking mayhem so the stadium yeah. is nice though like the Coliseum Oh, yeah, it's a nice stadium. I just, I mean, living there, I'm like, okay, I've seen it all. I'm like, you guys are fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And now I get why, and Michigan fans are the same way. They just fucking hate each other. (laughs) College is pretty, college is a wild, wild experience. I just like all the traditions and how schools think they're like better than the other just because of what they have. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's crazy because it's, it's, I mean, in my opinion, my old school small town opinion i think colleges are fucking stupid i think it's pointless to go nowadays because they don't really come out with anything unless you go for a specific degree but they are massive yep going to the notre dame football game just it was whenever i realized how fucking big this shit actually is Mm -hmm. was insane and it's not a massive school no in comparison to like fucking ohio state Texas, Michigan. You know how much money they make off of fucking apparel? Oh, my God. Just apparel. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to one of these games? I've been to a Penn State game. And, like, at their, what were they called? Like, the school stores? Yeah. Yeah, like the... The, the spirit stores or whatever yeah. you want to call that are fucking literally 100 square feet yeah. of store? Bro. Blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Never not blow my mind. People spend big money there. Bro, there was 14 registers going, and the lines were 20 people deep. Mm -hmm. And the lady told me that this isn't the busy day. And I said, excuse the fuck out of me. (laughs) It's not the busy day? Yeah. My brother and I, we probably spent both 200 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. I still have. Hannah's like, uh, I still have the one uh, Notre Dame t-shirt I had from then. Still have it. It's beat as fuck. And she's like, why do you keep this thing? And I'm like, this is one thing I'm never getting rid of. I will have it forever. It has holes all through it. I wear it every now and then around the house. Mm-hmm. And Adeline and her are like, this is ridiculous. Why do you have this on? I'm like, because I like it. Mainly because you guys hate it. That's yeah. why I'm wearing it. Yeah. I, it's probably one of my, it's literally one of the oldest shirts I own. Yeah. It's probably from 2011. Yeah. 2011. I think it's when we went Man, in. Like 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Oh, man. Well, a lot happened. Tom Brady retired. Joe Burrows. Joe Burrow stopped Kansas City, and nobody has to deal with Jackson Mahomes and his fucking Patrick Mahomes' weird wife. Like, they're weird, right? I I don't know them personally, but... I think Patrick Mahomes at some point is going to get rid of her and get a different wife. Because I know they have a kid together, and that's horrible to say. Mm-hmm. But she's pretty fucking annoying on the internet. Mm. Like the things she yeah, have you seen anything she does? No. Like at the last game, she was shooting champagne all everybody. No. Yeah, out of her fucking out of the box that she was in, mm. and like people didn't like it. And it's like, bitch, what are you doing? Yeah. Like who do you what are you doing? Like nobody actually likes you. Mm-hmm. It's tough. It is. It's tough to watch. It's a little cringe. Mm-hmm. And then Jackson Mahomes is horribly cringe. Mm. Have you seen any of his TikTok yeah, and stuff? Yeah, a little bit, a bit much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shane, Shane's a big fan. Mm-hmm. He's weird. But like uh, also, uh, Joe Burrow going to the Super Bowl, and Shane went to Ohio. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was crazy. How was Ohio, Shane? <clears throat> I didn't like it. No? Nope. Didn't have any fun? All right, I had fun, but only at the specific event I went to go to Ohio for. Anywhere else, like after or before, I didn't like it. (laughs) Were you kind of in and out? Yeah, yeah, just a night. Yeah. And a half. Night and a half. Two nights. Spent one night in in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any pushback from residents at all? No, no, I thought they were definitely going to, like, see my – I was wearing a – the Sherpa. I thought someone was going to see me and you know, tell me to leave. Possibly beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Ga- gang bang on Shane. <laughs> were they? Were you wearing your fuck Ohio shirt? I had it under it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Keep it low key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just can't show that shit off. 
No, uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. But yeah, it was fun. The game was fun. What did you do in Ohio? I went to the U.S. soccer game when they played El Salvador. Mm. It was really cold and fun. Mm. It was cold. It was really cold. Like 28, sitting there the whole time, snowing. Nice. Yeah. The El Salvadorians. Yeah. Yeah. They're not used to the cold neither, huh? No. No, they're not. I don't think anybody's used to 28-degree weather, though. Nope. I'm over it. You done with the cold? Done. Well, done with it. Phil says six more weeks. So. Is that what he Did said? He? Yeah. Oh, he saw his shadow. Yeah, but Buckeye Chuck didn't. So, so Buc- Ohio's six- going to have spring, and then we're going to have winter. <laughs> Fuck that Chuck. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, but he did. I don't think nice. Chuck's real. I think that's a fa- facade. How long has Buckeye Chuck been around? Oh, I'm, I think it said 79, but... What? That long? I I could be lying. There's no way. That's a long time. He's in Marion, Ohio. I don't know where that's at. He be- he began predicting the arrival of spring in the 70s. Yeah. What about Punxsutawney Phil? I feel so uh, fucked up if he's not as old. <laughs> Buckeye Chuck's really fat, like super fat. <laughs> Where like he... Phil is more muscular. <laughs> Phil is no way this old. 1887. They've definitely had multiple Phils. No shit, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say there's at least two. Oh, it be- the Legend of Groundhog Day began in 1886 with the editor of Punxsutawney's newspaper, and then it began the Legend of Punxsutawney Phil. Oh, nice. Started with a newspaper. I love how, like... Just like Barstool. Like, yeah. how hammered, like, everyone gets at, like, the Groundhog event. I Back in the day, lately, because of the, the the pandemic, probably not so much, but back in the day, oh, yeah. They only live four to five years. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oof. I thought they at least got six or seven. <laughs> Man, that is it's very short-lived. It is. Yeah, because people shoot them because they fucking eat everything, cocksuckers. Like, literally one of the most hated varmints in Pennsylvania is a fucking groundhog. Yeah, fucking wannabe beavers. They're pretty fast, too. Oh, they're not slow. Mm-mm. For as big as they are, they move. Like, they will fuck a garden up. They will fuck your shit up. Fuck, like, a, the foundation of your garage up. They do that, too, huh? Yep. I saw it happen. Yeah. We'll go in there. You just shoot the fuckers. I smoked them out. Oh, really? Well, I didn't. All I actually didn't do that. I read about it. I read about it. Yeah. You, like, have to smoke them out and then... Just pop them. Yep. Shoot them right in the fucking head. I bought a a trap. I bought a groundhog trap. I never used it, though. Ugh. Still sitting out in, outside. If you catch them in the trap, you gotta kill them. Because he's going to keep fucking your shit up. I was going to drive it somewhere. And drop him off? Like at a farm? Either a farm or, like, sabotage someone's plan. You know? Mm. Yeah. That's diabolical. It is. Do you imagine uh, catching, like, five to ten groundhog and then letting them loose in, like, a Ryan neighborhood with a bunch of gardens in the back? Or a golf course. A golf golf. Oh, my God, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck it. <laughs> That'd be a riot. That'd be horrible. I'd be I, so pissed. I can imagine, like, it's like a caged animal after you catch one. Yeah, he's yeah. going to go nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I had this whole thought of how, like, how do you do it? Like, you trap it. I even had, like, I was like, I need to get special gloves to handle the crate. Like, yeah. Yeah, it didn't work out, though. No. No. Like, it's so weird. I have all these thoughts like that. I have, like, all these weird plans that I don't share with anyone. Like, Just Cam doesn't up, even know that. Keep them upstairs in your head. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, it's good on the podcast. Let them out. Yeah. Let them out. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that we, uh, I think we as men and females do this as well. I just think that we keep it to ourselves about, like, our, you know, it's like the fucking memes about having a conversation, like, in the shower mm-hmm. and then the shampoo bottles being like, <laughs> like that was a good one. Like, yeah, everybody does that. Everybody has their places of daydreaming. Everyone has their places of uh, their thoughts. They, ev- I believe everyone has 
like their place to do their thing. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, like you have like, I have all these thoughts. Well, where exactly are you actually located when you have these thoughts? And how often do you just revert back to them? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I have those thoughts at certain times and it's like usually now I haven't been listening to music in my truck. Like whenever I get in my truck to drive home or here, it's quiet. And I'm just kind of in my own world mm -hmm. because like right now music really isn't influencing me in that way. So I just have my time. So I have my weird fucked up thoughts while I'm driving. <laughs> and like, you know, whenever people have them, it's just how they go about it. But I think everybody does have them. Yeah. But I also think it's important because it still brings out the imaginary side of the brain, which I think should not die. I think you need to be imaginative. I think you need to have dreams and hopes and aspirations, even if it is catching 20 groundhog and letting them loose at a fucking golf course. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it's bringing some joy to your life. And at that moment in time, you might have needed some joy. Like, I'm not really hurting anyone. No. But like, it's like a funny little joke. You're causing them a fucking boatload of problems and money, though, you prick. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> a ton of problems. Oh, my God. Yep. I don't think everyone has these thoughts, though. I don't think they have thoughts about releasing 20 Groundhog on a golf course, but I do believe everybody has some pretty fucked up thoughts. Like yes. when like when Kim sees what, like she can see it happen. Like we'll be sitting there and she'll be like, what are you thinking about? So you do, like, you do it when you guys are there then? Like I'll just be sitting, like I'll look around and I'm like, like I'll even like start to laugh. Like, oh yeah, that would be great. Boy. And she's like, oh, she's like, what are you thinking about? I'm like, you really want to know? I was like, there was about 25 things in less than three minutes. It was great. I, was like, too. I, I thought of all of them, like in detail, like awesome. rapid fast. Yeah. And then there's other times like where I'll be sitting there and like I kind of think she's doing the same thing. I'm like, hey, what are you thinking about? And she's like, nothing. I'm like, what do you mean nothing? You're not thinking about anything. I was like, you you were thinking about something. We're not doing anything. She's like. I literally wasn't thinking. That's the, and I'm like, I was like a thoughtless mind. Like you just didn't think. How's that even possible? I cannot sit anywhere and not just think. So we're gonna get down to the bottom of there's four. There's four males in here. I think it's a male thing and not a female thing. I think some females do it, but mm -hmm. not all. Yeah. Us, I think we are half moron. Like I literally think that there is something with us. Because we see the memes. I see the memes all over the internet. I'm like, I'm not the only one that has these weird fucked up thoughts. And that's the only reason I'm rationalizing this. You might be doing it at a high level because you do have 75,000 fucking tabs open on your computer. You're a little different. That's true. But I do believe that we have these thoughts. Do you, Shane? Yeah, I th think about crazy stuff sometimes. Like, do you have those, do you have like a thing that you do where you're like, whenever you just go into your own world and think, even if it's once a week? Yeah, oh, all the time. Sometimes, like, Brittany will be talking to me, and I don't even pay attention. <laughs> that's normal, Shane. Yeah. That's a definite. <clears throat> Maybe that's just selective hearing. Yeah, oh, 100%. <laughs> Maybe I'm not but, the... like, I do it so much. <laughs> oh, my God, do I do that a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. I pretend I don't hear so many things. <laughs> As a dad? Fuck. Actually, to be completely... What's today? Wednesday? Yeah. Monday night, she made two different meals, right? And Two meals. One kind of for lunches for the week, and then one we were going to have for dinner. And she, like, asked me which one I wanted. I verbally said which one I wanted. She served me that. And then I looked down, and I'm like, I was like, man, I really wanted the, I really wanted the other meal. And she's like, D did you, we just, we talked. She's like, you responded, and this is what you asked for. I'm like... I was like, fuck. I was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, you're right. I was like, I probably definitely did that. And she's like, so you're apologizing. Like, you know you did this. I'm like, yes. Oh, my God. I was like, no, I'm so sorry. I think you're just, I think you live in your own world sometimes then. Dude, it That's is. That's what it is. It's really bad. It's not, it's not selective hearing. Selective hearing is pretending I don't hear what she just said and how important it was. No, I legit was responding. And it's not like I was on my phone. Like, uh, yeah, I'll do that. And then, no, I was yeah. talking to her. I don't know how she hasn't killed you. Dude, I'd fucking I kill you. There's at least four or five situations in the last 12 months that it would have been totally understandable if she would have killed me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I can think of two right now. That one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> that one right there. Because uh -huh. she's, like, specifically asked you as she's making food. Mm -hmm. she, had, she kept everything out 
in the event that I wanted to choose between them. Yeah, so, I'd have killed you. Yeah. I'd at least fucking punched you. Yeah, she was so fucking mad. Yeah. Not as mad, though. No, as purchasing a fucking... Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I didn't buy anything. Nope, don't buy it. They gave it to me. That's a fucking funny thing on the internet right now. I know. I, I've been wanting to make one. <clears throat> they gave it to me. <laughs> but I do believe that guys have these fucked up thoughts. I think we all do in our own way. Like, how do you think all this crazy shit in the world occurs? Like, like I'm going to say something relatively sexist right now. Some of the most crazy, great things on the planet were created by men. <laughs> because they were fucking horrendously stupid ideas that worked out. Absolutely. Because other guys thought they were cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, think about the Wright brothers. Like, yeah, dude, that's what I mean. Hey, yeah. we're going to build this giant mound of sand and we're going to try to fly stuff off of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can could... you imagine the people, like, driving by, like, watching this unfold? They're like, look at these fucking guys. That dude broke his leg for the second time. You guys are going to fly. Yeah. You guys are going to fly? Good luck. Dipshits. Or like, these fucking morons. BMX is the same thing. We're going to build giant amounts of dirt and we're going to ride bikes off them and do they're the flips. craziest things. The craziest things on the planet typically were created by men. And I'm being very sexist and demeaning women right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, but I think men have a stupid gene in them. I honestly do think so. Jackass? Yes. Men are, men just, it's... I know because I like crazy shit and like some of the things that I say I want to do and like I'm into, there are other females that are into it, but from the fucking masses, no, predominantly men. And it's because we just, that's the things that resonate with us. And then when you find a broad that actually likes to do that stuff too, you're like, oh, you're a unique one, huh? <laughs> oh shit, huh? Look, look at kids. Like, look at SJ right now. Oh, the my crazy Jesus, God shit he does. My nephew. My sister sent me a video of my nephew yesterday. This is the first time he's ever done this. They have a stone fireplace, and, like, it's all these blocks, right? And he's, like, talking to each block, like, and, like, scolding them. Like, no, like, no, no, no. And then over to this one, and then down here. And then he, like, turned around and saw my sister was filming him, and he came over and was, like, looking at her. She's like, what are you doing? She's like, this is brand new. She's like, she, he just had a conversation with the fucking Wall. fireplace. Yeah. Talking to the blocks. Yep. I was like, yeah, fucking boys. Imagination runs rampant in children. It is beautiful. Yeah. And that's why I was saying how important it is as us as, in, as, as grownups to still have these imaginary thoughts and these exciting moments, even if they are fucking far-fetched and outlandish. I think we still have to have them, no matter who you are and what you do, anything. Male, female, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think it's vital to occur because mm -hmm. I'd never want to strip the imagination away of a child. And then whenever you look at it as an adult, like whenever you have an imagination like we have and like many other people have, you need to take that and run with it. You need to run wild with it. But the problem is, is it's real life now. Mm -hmm. Like it means you have to execute. You can't just dream. You got to fucking execute. That means it's going to be really hard. So now your dreams you're going to have to, your, your, your dreams have to become reality. And in between that is whenever you have to take all those thoughts into actions. And that's difficult to do. Very. And then you just take it step by step by step by step by step. I mean, everybody that listens to this podcast, like everybody that listens to this podcast more than likely has bought something from us. Mm -hmm. Everybody that listens to this podcast has leveled up in their life in some way, shape, or form. Whether it be with their families, their significant other, their job working out, different things in life, they all level up, and that's the goal. But in order to level up, I do believe that you have to have an imagination because you had to dream it up. Mm -hmm. You had to think it up. It means you had to take time to yourself to think. And when do you think? How do you go about it? Like me personally right now, I'm on this kick where I'm just dreaming about hunting. I like it. I, I want to experience it because I want this to be something in my life because I'm, I'm, it's, it's, there's some value that I'm putting on it that I really want to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And I don't know which one I like the most. So I'm going to do as many as I can because I want to find out what I really enjoy so that I do it with my son. Mm -hmm. And then he enjoys doing it with me for the lifetime of him because... I'm going to go at some point and what type of, what am I passing on to my family? What am I passing on to the family name? How am I passing it on? What is going to occur? Because today in society, in my opinion, I think family heritages are lost. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think there is as many uh, heirlooms passed on, recipes, um, traditions. I don't think it's passed on, at least in this, in our area. Mm -hmm. There's not very many things that are continually passed on from generation to generation. And I find it to be a little fucking disturbing. Yeah. <clears throat> because in my, for my family, what did my dad pass to me? I'm a workaholic. Mm -hmm. My dad's a workaholic. I'm a workaholic. Like, I know I'll never be broke. You know how? Because I'm always willing to work. I don't give a fuck what it is. I'm always willing to work. I'll do whatever I have to do for my family. That's a very strong personality trait within my dad's dad, him, and me. So I'd like to pass that on to my son, but I also want to make sure that I pass other things on, like traditions or recipes, wh whatever it may be that I learned from another individual, like all these people I'm meeting, you know, to go hunting and do all these different experiences in life be great to be able to have these traditions in life and 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 pass them on generation to generation like i'd like there to be a seth ferrosi the third seth ferrosi the fourth i'd love to continue to pass it on and what did we learn from me in that would be that it passes on to generations mm -hmm. like i don't think there's a lot of it and it's not just amongst male either i think that those things are lost amongst females as well like my grandmother to daughter, to granddaughter, to great granddaughter, like these things need to be passed on. And it, it, I just might not be aware of it, but it's important recipes, traditions, how you, how you treat your man, how you raise your daughters to treat their man, who to look for. Like that's a lost thing in society because there's so much, uh, there's just so much clouded bullshit from society. I'm like, it's, it, it's, it's vital. Mm -hmm. Have we not realized on how important it is? Because there's, the, it's like we're breaking apart piece by piece and there's no, there's not a whole lot of great traditions anymore. Am I wrong? No, I mean, I think like one thing that sticks out to me from a traditional standpoint is like how holidays and stuff are done. Yeah. Like gatherings and getting okay. together yeah. and all that stuff. Cause I know personally from, from my, my family, things have changed quite a bit. Oh yeah. You know, Back in the day, there was nowhere else to be on Christmas Day. There was nowhere else to be on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. Now it's like every branch of my family might either they might work, they might have this other side of the family that they just that's where they gravitate to now. And it's just a different tradition than what we were used to. It was like it's like multiple things. But it, it seems as though back in the day, like when I was birth through 10 11 12 years old yeah every single person was at thanksgiving and christmas morning everyone was there yeah you know and, and if you weren't like i don't know it was really super awkward if you weren't Actually, yeah they're, they're, i don't remember one holiday without everyone being there yeah i grew up that same way yeah i grew up that same way or things happened on thanksgiving and then christmas Mm -hmm. Like different sides of the family. Yeah, right. Those were occurring and then alternated back and forth and things like that, mm -hmm. which is understandable. But I I, I I see where you're coming from with that. But even more so to like, even like, like there's, I, I feel like uh, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm taking in that I need to make sure I do. I have to begin something within my family. Mm -hmm. Like my dad passed on me being oh, I'm to, to to always be able to work and not be afraid of it mm -hmm. that's a big personality trait mm -hmm. i think that's something all males should possess mm -hmm. i mean a really strong tradition you guys have as a family too is is your dinner together every night oh yeah I, oh yeah I mean, that's no, a good point no matter what time that is it could be 9 30 at night yeah 10 o'clock and yeah. you and the kids and hannah like it's yes we eat dinner that, that's that is very far in between now. Really? Yes. We eat dinner together every single night. Because from from what I know, people like families eat in shifts essentially. Like if there's uh, sports or something involved, sure. Mom and these two are eating at five o'clock or whatever. Dad gets home because he had to pick up the kid at sports. They're going to eat at seven. Like, yeah. It's very like in yeah. shifts. Yeah, we do. We do. We we do have a tight knit home. Mm -hmm. Our home is very tight knit. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point because mm -hmm. we do eat dinner every. We do eat dinner together every single night, usually at nine o'clock. Yep. And then, I mean, we say grace, mm -hmm. eat dinner. Yep. Like it's something. It's just. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, I look at it as like, because I was telling Hannah that we need to make sure that now that Adeline's getting older and 
and how important it is for her to understand like how I treat Hannah and how Hannah treats me is what these kids are going to learn more than anything that we say. Mm -hmm. They're going to learn the, the routine of everything. They're going to see how we act and how we interact, how we do everything, like how a holiday goes. Like, cause now that she's getting older, she's 14 years old. Like we're going to, in a sense, kind of lose her almost. Mm -hmm. And what are we losing? We're just losing. Uh, she's becoming a free thinker. Mm -hmm. So she's going to think things are stupid. She's going to be curious about all these different things, but, um, like she's going to might not dislike us, but just not be on the challenge, same page. Challenge yeah. you. Yeah. Challenge us. Good point. Nice, nice word. Thanks. Um, over the next so many years, but then she'll come back because mm -hmm. that's what I did as a teenager. I challenged my dad all the time and then ended up turning into the motherfucker, but <laughs> that's what is going to happen. So what is she going to turn into? Like how, like that's the foundation that we're building with the children. And I think that a lot of times as adults, as parents, people don't place enough emphasis on that. Mm -hmm. Like it's so important to have such strong household family values. And I don't mean like traditional, like, oh, uh, like a man and a woman. Like I understand people are gay. I understand people have different lives and do different things. But no matter who you are and what you do, I think you need to pass on good family values. Mm -hmm. You need to do that. You need to pass on those things. Like even as, as, as females, like I think it's important, like recipes or things that have been in your family like for, for 50 years, your grandmother, this was your grandmother's pie recipe. And I think it's important that the granddaughter learns to make that through this. Because it's not like, I mean, what, what the fuck else could be so much more important than, than those things? Like, I feel like society has made that not cool. Am I wrong? Not that it's not cool, just like it's not a priority. Like, it's just not even... Yeah, but yeah. Do you know where I'm I coming think, from? I think do it's, you guys get this? Am I talking out my ass? Yeah. or I think it's also, like, people that, like, new relationships or coming from maybe, like, smaller families and you have to establish your own traditions. So maybe it's something, like, you get from your parents, but you have to work with your significant other to establish, like, okay, we I want to start doing this. Or, like you, like, I want to learn how to hunt so I can pass it on. Like, I want to learn how to uh, go fishing or fishing like deep sea fishing and yeah. I want to start deep sea fishing. So I think there's a learning process, a learning curve and establishing own traditions with bringing in old family ones, like the holiday gathering, like, you know, you want to do that stuff. It's just getting on the same page and doing it. Yeah. No, I think that in today, in today, it's almost, I don't know. It just seems a little lost. And, and I think over the past two years, like families are ripped the fuck apart. Well, yeah. It was, it was forced. Yeah, that distance was forced. The traditions were forced to be put hunt. on hold or be gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's crazy. I mean, and and if you do that long enough, bro, it takes eight weeks to establish a new habit. You you ignore something or push it to the side for two years, it's it's almost gone. Yeah, that's a crazy point you just brought up there. Yeah, it takes eight weeks to establish a new habit. Sixty days. Yep, it takes sixty days to make something a habit. Mm -hmm. And and like it's been years for this shit mm -hmm. so people are now reconditioned yeah fuck i am everybody is yep everybody is i don't like going out in public i am not i'm not good in public bro i went to a gas station like went inside a gas station for the first time in a while yeah last night mm -hmm. i never go i realized like i went in and i'm like i haven't been in one of these motherfuckers in a minute i rarely interact with anyone and like exchange money for something yeah in person no, you're right yeah once in a while when we go out to eat, I don't count going out to eat. It's like the only time I don't feel as awkward. But like going to a grocery store, going into a gas station, going into the bank, because I don't always go in. No, I never go in. Like, I, I don't know. It's weird. Doesn't it seem like, I mean, all right, let's say that this, uh, I mean, I was thinking if we're coming upon the time uh, whenever in 2020, whenever uh, the pandemic started. And I remember sitting here with you three, or you two, and it was us three talking about the Arnold Classic getting canceled. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, is this a bag of bullshit? This just smells like shit. Maybe you can dig that fucking clip up, Shane. I was like, this is bullshit. I was like, they're canceling this. I was like, it looks like shit, smells like shit. This is a government sham. Fucking people went nuts on me. 
And I'm like, it, it just smelled like shit from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Because it's 2022. It was 2020. Mm -hmm. You really think the fucking zombie apocalypse is going to happen? It's almost like everybody watched too many goddamn movies and they were excited for the zombie apocalypse to happen. I'm like, bitch, you have fucking two guns and 20 rounds. We are not the same. <laughs> The zombie apocalypse happens. I am just fine. Yep. You fuckers are gone. But whenever it occurred, I'm like, it just smelled like shit because you can't trust these motherfuckers. It's like, how, how, when is everybody going to realize that you can't trust certain people mm -hmm. and those people in a controlling environment, such as the news, the media, the government, like they're like left and right. No bitch. I just want to be free. I don't want left and right. I don't want none of that fucking bullshit because they're all taking money from somewhere. No matter who has been in office for fucking decades it has never mattered never mattered they're making money in some way shape or form and for somehow nothing really gets accomplished are you fucking kidding me with the fucking billions of dollars that goes on nothing gets accomplished look how much we got accomplished here with a little bit of money we did and you're going to tell me these motherfuckers can't accomplish shit no they just don't want to accomplish anything because they can stalemate things and drag them out and elongate things and then blame you for all your problems it's like blaming me for the fucking recycling problem well how about you go yell at the fucking company that keeps making plastic it's not my fault these motherfuckers made plastic it's there you stop them from making plastic make a glass i don't fucking know or tell them to fucking use the goddamn spigot the trash problem isn't my fault it's kind of crazy how they just push and project everything. It's like the race thing. Well, it's it's cycles. It's been happening forever. It's it, and the, again. The, did you see the tweet floating around from Joe from Joe Rogan? Which one? It was from a decade ago or twelve years ago. Okay. And it was the same thing that he's talking about right now. It was another thing about race. It was yeah. another thing about gun controls. Another thing about uh, stopping the free thinkers. Yeah. Like. Dude, it was clockwork. It was to the day, to the month. It was a very similar tweet. Two pres or yeah, three presidents apart. Yeah. How is the race thing my fault? How is it my fault? I don't understand. I'm pretty sure the fucking big corporations and the government run everything. Why is the president telling every me it's my fucking fault? Why is the fucking congressman or why are people out there saying like, you racist cocksuckers and all? They're not saying that. But they're saying these things and I'm like, You've literally been running this country for decades. You have been. All you motherfuckers have been. Democrats have been in office. Republicans have been in office. There have been fucking black people in office. There have been Hispanic people in office. You name it. But somehow it's still society's fault. Am, am I the fucking asshole here? Because I'm pretty sure you guys are like, like now all of a sudden everything's about equality of men and women and equality of race and everything. And I'm like... I'm pretty sure most of society has thought that for quite some time. Whenever you bitches are the ones in the giant fucking corporations, fucking Forbes 500, and you guys are the ones running the world, and you're telling me I'm the one? You're the one that does all the advertising. They're like, there's no black shows. You, you want me to make a black, black show? You're the fucking ones running the goddamn TV networks, you fucking assholes, and now all of a sudden you guys are the saving grace? No. The Oscars, the Oscars, remember whenever Denzel got sh got fucked over the one year, years ago, and they're like, there's no black uh, Oscar winners, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure Denzel should have fucking won, mm -hmm. and it's like, mm -hmm. now, they're the most inclusive group, and I'm like, well, 15 years ago, they weren't, like, I'm not the one fucking voting, mm -mm. I don't vote for the Academy Awards, <laughs> no, I'm the one watching, oh. I bought the goddamn fucking movies, you cocksuckers. Well, yeah, we're, we're not the ones saying these things. No, <laughs> that's what I mean, I'm like, and I'm pretty sure, like... That wasn't like the narrative or that wasn't like how everybody felt. That was the narrative the, the, that they, in a sense, created. Yeah, it's 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 almost like what's happening with the NFL right now. Like that Brian Flores, you see the lawsuit yet? No. Brian Flores, the ex-Dolphins coach, mm -hmm. filed a lawsuit against the NFL and three NFL teams, the Broncos, Giants, and Dolphins, for racial discrimination. And they're saying that he they didn't hire him because of his color. Um, he got fired from the Dolphins because of his color. He got a sham interview from the Giants um, when Bill Belichick said, oh, congrats on the job, three days before his interview, and he didn't get it. So, But it's it's a thing where I was watching uh, Get Up this morning. I love that show with Good Mike show. Greenberg. Yeah. So to their point is it's when you said it's not a society thing, which it's not. It's not the NFL that's fucking Brian Flores over. 
the NFL's put processes in place, the Rooney rule, they have to interview minorities, no matter what color they are, black, white, they need fairness. But in the end, at the end of the day, it's not the NFL, it's the owners. The so, owners are, are a group of people that just do that but to other people. Th- that's not my fault. Ex- exactly. I don't. Do I care whether my team has a black head coach or not? I don't give a fuck. Just wanted to win. I don't care. I don't care if you're white, black, male, female, gay, straight. Can you do your fucking job? Mm -hmm. We have every single walk of life here at this company. Guess what? If you suck at your job or you fuck up, I'm going to call you on your shit. I don't give a fuck who you are or what you think you are. Like, it don't fucking matter. Are you executing at a high level? Are you being the best motherfucker you can be? And if you think you are, okay, that's one thing. But are you actually? Because my job as an owner is to make sure everybody's on point and they continue to level up. But whenever it comes to these sports and saying there's not enough black owners, okay, there, it's not the fact that there's black people in the world that don't have money. There are less people, less black people in the world that have money, but how many black people want to become owners of NFL teams? Are, is there a laundry list of people that are saying, I want to go buy a team? Because if you do, then it's going to cost a lot of fucking money, and then it's, it, it, do they want to do that? Or would they rather do something else? Like, those are the questions that need to be asked. And again, I don't have enough money to buy a fucking NFL team, and I know nothing about it. Mm-hmm. But do I care if Mike Tomlin's the fucking head coach or Bill Cower? No, I don't care if it, they're black or white. I care are we going to win. Because I like to watch the TV and win. Yep. I don't give a fuck. Exactly. But then, but it's like it's in society. It's like we've we've been pinned against each other because whenever we bring up, it's like, well, I don't know anything about it. I'm not fucking owner of an NFL team. I'm not Roger Goodell. And I'm not saying that there shouldn't be black more black head coaches or more black owners. I don't yeah. care if somebody owns and it's a fucking woman or a gay dude or a fucking woman that has a penis all of a sudden. I don't give a fuck. Do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Just don't give me shit for my fucking shit, you cocksuckers. You're supposed to be free. You want to chop your dick off? Go ahead. Cool beans. Have at it. Don't expect me to like it, just like you give me shit for being a fucking sauce head. Right? These are simple concepts in life. Aren't aren't, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Pepsi and, and all their bullshit. It's like, oh, you think all of a sudden Pepsi's great? No, Pepsi does whatever their narrative needs to be so they make more money. Yep. That's all they're doing. They're going for the latest trend or the latest fad or the ideal ideology for the moment. Yes. To manipulate their market. Yeah. Just like any, I mean, any Pepsi company does. Sucks too. Fuck Pepsi. Yeah. I Coke's way better. Pepsi Zero sucks. Zero sugar, whatever it is. They're not good. Coke all the way. Coke all the way. But anyway, um, but I just, I find it to be, it's like, I don't understand why us as, uh, as a community like how it's crazy how they've been able to brainwash everybody in a sense or get or, or put narratives into the news and into everyone's head to make them feel a certain way and pin races and pin genders and pin everything against each other. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, oh, there's a fucking million genders. OK, that, that, that's a great story. Cool. But you know that it takes a male and a female to like make more, right? Science. Then they're like, well, that's not the real science. Like, okay. But it is. But it is. Like, you can't just, that's the, the scary part of today that give them an inch and they take a fucking mile. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden they believe that males can be pregnant. And I'm like, no, it's still a female. Like, like you need the in- internal parts for that to occur. It's a crazy time, but yeah. yeah. But in society, it's, it's fucked. It's a weird time. Mm -hmm. We're going through, we said it years ago, we're going through a time that is going to be marked down in history as something. And it's, as we go through this, it's going to be. uh, Well, and it's going to be looked at two different ways. Yeah. From our perspective, it's going to look at this huge shift in everything. And then to others, it's going to be looked at as like this great, this great epiphany. uh, Progressivism. Yeah, right. Do you think that other points in history are like this and we only view them as one side of history? I mean, I think every point in history had its own good and bads. That's what and I mean. You can, yeah, I mean, somebody's going to look at this and be like, oh, well, if this didn't happen, well, 
then this wouldn't happen. Whatever in the future happens, like okay, if World War Two didn't happen, then what what does the world look like? But it happened the way it did, so the world looks like this. Yeah. But what's the opposite of this? I have no idea. Yeah, no, and that's what I'm at. I mean. We're that's what we're living through. We're living through a time in history, and it's like, but right now, even such as that's why everybody's comparing what's going on to Nazi Germany because of the 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 hushing of voices. Like, mm-hmm. bro, I'm fucking shadow banned on Instagram again. Fucking, they're killing me. That right didn't take now. long. <laughs> oh, they're fucking hammering me right now, and it's like you're silencing people. Like, I'm yeah. watching it occur. It's a real thing, and it's crazy because. That was part of the whole book burning and the re-education of people. Yep. And that's, in a sense, occurring today. Like, they're trying to censor Joe Rogan. People are like, oh, I'll take my shit off of Spotify. It's like, this dude is literally just being a, uh, speaking freely, talking about subjects, talking about hard, to- uh, hard, intense conversations. Like, bro, everybody just needs to stop being so goddamn sensitive and afraid to talk about shit. Like, they're afraid. Everybody's afraid to talk about it. And it's like, dude, at the end of the day, don't be so fucking soft. Everybody, it's okay to talk about race and gender and things that we don't really know about because if we don't verbally talk about them, we internalize them. And if we internalize them, we don't actually think freely. We aren't educating each other or discussing it. And I could be wrong. When the fuck am I right every single time? We could be wrong about things, but it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you cancel somebody. It means you fucking educate them or inform them. Tell them about a situation so that we can begin a conversation to think more freely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you're fucked. You can talk to people with different views, but you can't get upset if they say one thing that you don't agree with. That's when you talk about it and try to understand or come to a point and, of agreement. And that's the great thing about Joe's show. Yep, He brings people on all the time that he may not have the same opinions of. A, a lot. Almost all of them. Dude, he, I mean, that's the thing that everybody's realizing that we've been saying it for so long with our company because we believe in freedom. Bro, it's like, I don't give a fuck if you're gay, straight. We've said that forever. I don't give a fuck who you are. Are you a good person? You just want to be free. Because united we stand, divided we fall. Everybody's fucking watching it right now. Everybody. And the fact that people are trying to cancel and get rid of people that want to be free speakers and free thinkers are fucked. Fucked. Every way, shape, or form. It's a scary time because that's... He brought on Sanjay Gupta. Like, dude, go listen to that podcast. He brought on Bernie fucking Sanders. Go listen to that podcast. Like, and then he brought on these people who are literally the most accredited people in their field. And those are the ones that you want taken down. That's the scary part of it all. Mm -hmm. Whenever you bring on someone who is the most accredited person, uh, that one, I can't remember the guy's name. I don't want to butcher his name, but he was the most, um, uh, most published uh, person in that field. Like that's who he was. Mm-hmm. And they took it off of YouTube. You silenced one of the most accredited people in that field of work. Took it off there because you didn't like what he had to say. That is crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So, I mean, it's a wild thing going on right now, and I cannot stress enough to people to... Uh, don't be influenced one way or another. Gather as much information as you can and then think for yourself. Mm-hmm. And and that goes for everything in life. Relationships, working out, food choices, everything. It's like every person with a fucking diet under the sun, it's like, okay, there's seven different diets right now that all sound pretty fucking good. Well, they all are pretty good, mm-hmm. Okay. In their own regard, you now have to take the time to go through the one, them and see what works best for you. You need to think freely. You don't need to be so easily influenced by one way. Just because it sounds good doesn't mean it's going to be good for you. It's like looking at a fucking a 10. That broad's fucking smoking hot. But what does she add to my life? If she just looks good, she's just eye candy for everywhere, for everyone to watch me with. What happens if the bitch is a dead fish in bed? Okay, so now you just look good for everybody, and everybody tells me how hot my wife is, but she actually doesn't fuck. And she hates sucking dick. And she doesn't cook. And she doesn't clean. So you just look good. Huh, well, fuck you, you waste of fucking life. Get out of my life. You're just a waste of flesh. You hold no value to me. You know what I mean? 
It was, so it's just, it, I don't know. Got a little mm-hmm. intense there for a second. Mm-hmm. It's an intense topic. Yeah. It for sure is. And I think too many people get too many. It's just they, the, the news has wrapped everyone up into the just dumbest fucking shit possible. It's, it's like identity politics hard as fuck. Like Joe Biden saying, oh, I'm going to hire a fucking a, a black woman for Supreme Court. Oh, you've already decided that? You're not even going to look under the person who's the best fit for the job? If it's a black woman, great. Who's the best fit person for the job? Yeah, that's how you look at things. The most qualified, not what they look like. And then I'm all of a sudden a racist asshole for saying that shit that I just said. No, it's not that. I don't care who it is. The, I want the best person for the job in, in the position. No, him speaking that way is racist. That's what I thought. But yeah. Because he's speaking on it as if it's like a, it's his gift. Here's my gift. I'm going to hire someone that is not white for this position. That's like, fucked up. Dude, that is fucked up because that's taking away from everyone that is qualified for that position, especially if you're black or Hispanic or another race. Especially that. Like, oh, I just got hired for this because I'm in the category that he's talking about. Like, no, I got hired for this because I'm Bro, better than every other candidate. I don't want to be gifted something I'm not fucking... I'm I don't deserve or work, worked hard Get enough out for. Of here. And the thing That's is... It's like a charity thing. <clears throat> there fuck could, that. There could be a line of people that are... There could be 12 people up for a position, okay? Which I would love to fucking see 12 people lined up for one of the positions we have open so that we could sit there and <laughs> go through you guys and... <laughs> love to have some options. <laughs> love to have a lot of options. That live here preferably. <laughs> but, it's, it's, uh, but it's tough to find, number one. But then if you sit down and you go through everything, it's like, okay. Like, and... and, and it has to be a fit. So I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know anything about the Supreme Court. I can't. I don't. I didn't go to law school. I didn't practice that or anything. But I would imagine that it's a similar to hiring any high-powered position. It needs to be someone that fits the role that you would like, mm-hmm. with experience. But not. But not so much just how they look. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I'm not. Like you can't do that. That's fucked up. And it's crazy that, that we have been dumbed down to society so easily to that point that we now are having an intense discussion based upon physical appearance. Isn't that fucking wild? Yep. Because that's the most simple thing to attack. That's the most, that's the smallest. We're not even attacking their history of them as an individual, like their track record of who their personality is and their characteristics and their traits. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not doing that. That's fucking wild. That we have been, we have, we, that we as a society have gotten to a point where it's so superficial. There's no depth. It's just wild that this conversation gets rekindled the way it does. Yeah. It just makes no sense to me. Because I mean, last time I checked, I have plenty of friends that are different ethnicities. We have plenty of employees that are every shape, size, and color under the sun. We, society as a whole, like, like what are we doing? What are we still talking about this for? That's what I mean. So, I, and I'd say we we have a pretty large, we have a pretty large group to be able to, to judge off of this because we have a company of almost fifty employees. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're bound to come across some fucked up individuals. Mm-hmm. I'm one of them, but we have every walk of life here at this company. So if we have every walk of life here, it's a pretty good judge, and we're able to accomplish some pretty incredible things together. And it's not like. Everything at this company fucking is rainbows and blowjobs. Mm-hmm. Things at this company on a daily basis are intense. Yeah. Very intense. From shipping to customer service to sales. Like, if... Everything. Everything. It's, it's like people are treating other people and judge other people like how you would pick out furniture. You look at surface value, like, oh, I like this table because it's that color of wood instead of that table because it's that walnut color. You know what I mean? So they'll look at someone and be like, oh, I don't like this person because of this because they look like this. Bro, it, it is crazy how it just got re-sparked up. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, and, and I'm all for things getting better because we're talking about our area and there might be other parts of the world that are different. Mm-hmm. But don't think for a second that the government and politics don't play such a role to keep people in positions they are like it's all done for purpose this is all a plan 
Like, and the only reason I can say it's a plan is because in order for things to be execute, in order for things to be occurring the way they are, these things don't just happen. Mm -hmm. They're not just, the news doesn't just spurt out the shit they do because that's what they believe. No, it's all a fucking plan. <laughs> Everything's a plan. <clears throat> Because that's why they're in the positions they're in. They want control. Yeah. These are all businesses. Yes. Everything is planned. Everything's planned. Everything is. We don't just do something today. We, we've been, if, if something gets done today at our company, it's been manifested and planned and executed for months. We knew this was going to happen today. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not just the, the news isn't waking up and going on air and be like, ready, go. All right, you're going to, what are we talking about? There? No. Uh -uh. No, and I think it happens at a high level. Like, mm -hmm. you mean, yeah, come on. I People mean, I can't even, be this fucking stupid. I didn't even think this had to be talked about. No. Oh, well, look at it. You know what I mean? Like, dude, okay, so do you know how many fucking brown bag deals I saw in construction? And just how many things happen. Corruption is real. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that people are super pissed about mm -hmm. is that corruption is real. And I agree. There are things that uh, there are things that occur that shouldn't occur. OK, but they just, you know, play the identity politics role whenever things does happen. But like from a political standpoint, like this is all about fucking gain, power and money. And don't think for a second that there aren't fucking millions, if not billions of dollars floating around amongst all of these motherfuckers that they will do and say anything to fuck you over because you actually don't exist to them. You're just a number. It's real. Like, the secretary sucks the dick of, of some business owners. Yes, that does occur at companies. So if that's occurring at a company and she's the one who gets a company car, imagine what happens at a fucking worldly level. <laughs> it's human. It's It's just... It's part of humanity that exists. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people would call it like the devil's work mm -hmm. because it's just evil is fucking fucked up. Mm -hmm. Because most of the people, like, I just, just want to do cool shit. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But I don't think enough, I think that, I mean, this podcast might be fucked too. They might hammer us on this one, but. Big time. It's on a different channel now. But <laughs> the big thing is, um, uh, like, it needs to be discussed. People need to talk and, and talk about it openly. And understand, like, I, I, I'm, I know I'm not the most intelligent person on the planet, but I do know that I'm a good person and I, I want to work hard and I want to do good things for my community. Like, do you see what happened at gymnastics? Hmm. Over the weekend, last weekend, the pictures I was posting? Oh, yeah. The girls put together the fucking, uh, that class thing. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, we have 75 girls on the competitive team at Elegance Elite. They travel all over. We have a meet this weekend down in West Virginia. But... The classes, um, there's like hundreds of kids in these classes, okay? The little kid classes, they're not on the competitive team. It's just the, Hannah gave them all the different names, the giraffes, the elephants, the monkeys, the zebras, the, the cheetahs and all that. It's just the, uh, the different uh, levels, mm -hmm. okay? And um, they decided that they wanted to put together a, 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 like a meet for all the classes mm -hmm. so that the parents and grandparents can show up to something and show off what they've all learned in their eight-week to ten-week class, mm -hmm. Well, I'm like, I was like, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Like, awesome. I downplayed how fucking big it would be. Mm -hmm. Because in gymnastics, when you go to a meet, it's a fucking weekend event. It's a big fucking deal. Mm -hmm. So Hannah's like, yeah, I ordered medals for all the little kids and all this. And I'm like, oh, man, so you went all out. I showed up, and I started getting stuff ready. And then I'm like, I, I, as they poured in for the, the first one was a small group early in the morning. They were all the really young kid, the mommy and me stuff. And then the one at 10, like 10 o'clock, I'm like... Hey, hey, what the fuck is going on here? Bro, there was 150 people over Believe in that motherfucker. It. Parents, grandparents, the kids were so excited because they're all three and four and five years old. Mm -hmm. They're not older kids, you know? They were just, this is like the first go they've had at a class, the first time they've ever done this, and it was jam-packed. Mm -hmm. It was wild. It was awesome to see every parent. Like, Hannah got fucking dozens of emails and text messages and even people were hitting me up in my dm saying how awesome it was there were motherfuckers that i haven't seen in like 10 years okay 10 years haven't seen them and then i'm in there because i'd end up like i had to start telling people like i had to get up in front of everybody and be like hey we're gonna start there's too many people in the parents area mm -hmm. they were all standing shoulder to shoulder they had to line the walls and stand there 
So, and I'm like, hey, I was like, everybody, you can start going up along the walls. The girls were standing there, so they'd stop them at the walls and everything to get pictures. And uh, and then afterwards, I was looking around, and there was people I haven't seen. They were like, I'm like, holy fuck. Oh, my God. Like, it was uh, Mike, one of my friends. He, uh, I was there, and I just saw him, and he's like, I didn't know you were the owner. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, yeah, Priscilla's here. And I'm like, dude, like, that's crazy. And all kinds of people bring their kids there. And they were so excited because it was the first experience they had for their kids to do something cool. Well, the, what's crazy is, like, it's an age group. Like, from, from the mommy and me to, like, that 12-year yeah. range. It's an age group where, like, a, a lot of kids, like, aren't even experimenting with sports yet. This is the intro. You know what I mean? That's what like, I mean. Th That's this what is it the was. first like group activity that parents come and spectate, and they're like, they've never felt that before. So what? You know? what, what Hannah had done was she, because uh, Hannah and the team, she's like, they wanted to put it on. And Hannah's like, we need to make this like a, a meet. Then you do like two or three events. Mm -hmm. But what 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 I didn't kind of catch on to at first that Hannah does, because that's what she does. Um, She's putting these young children out on the floor in front of a hundred fucking people that are three and four years old where they have to perform in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, bitch, you're a bad, you're a bad motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like getting these kids outside of their comfort zone where everyone's watching them at a young age. Because most kids will melt. Mm -hmm. Bro, me? Oh, I was so introverted. I would have fucking cried and held onto my mom's leg. I never would have went out on the fucking floor and did something. Mm -hmm. So they had all these, the, the obstacle course that they had set up that they do, uh, walking the balance beam three feet in the air, like big things that like, and then jumping off or doing a cartwheel off, like big time shit that like they, the grandparents hear about. Mm -hmm. It's the good shit in life of why we invested into that motherfucker whenever we were like, yeah, let's build gymnastics. And everybody's like, fuck you dickheads. Like the people that own this building were like, you're going to put gymnastics over there. So the guy that sold the fucking building to us here, Brad. Mm -hmm. His daughter's here. Because I remember him being like, you can put gymnastics in here, okay. And then, and then over the weekend, if you would have came in, bitch, there was 150 fucking people in there. Yeah. Per fucking group. Grandparents, sisters, everybody's, it was fucking awesome. And I'm like, that's why we created it, to have something in the community that people can bring their kids and have something that's just outstanding. It's clean, good people. We're not ripping you the fuck off. And the team spent all kinds of time to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Like spent a ton of time, ton of effort. All the older girls, all the older gymnastics girls in the optional levels, the 12 and up, mm -hmm. they were all there helping. So their job was, because they can't have jobs. They're here five days a fucking week, four hours at a fucking time. They can't have a fucking job. Right. When are they going to work? Mm -hmm. So to be able to have them involved in making sure everybody's, the kids are all in groups they're all following along. They're part of it. They're interacting with it, making sure the parents know what to do, where everything is. Dude, it's, it, it was, I, I, whenever I stepped back and looked, it was like, this is one of the fucking coolest things that we have done mm -hmm. because it doesn't exist without us, uh, us investing into it mm -hmm. and then Hannah and the team building it to be what it is. Mm -hmm. It's something that's in this community that is very strong and it's going to get bigger and bigger. And I'm incredibly proud of everybody that makes sure that stuff occurs. Yeah. It was awesome. But that's the good shit that needs to occur. And it's like, that's where things start. It's like, it didn't, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. It's part of the community. It's good to see, get the kids doing cool shit. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I saw people that I haven't seen in a decade. Well, and, and these a lot of these girls like came on with us at the start of like COVID and stuff too. Yeah, you know, so for two years these girls had something to do. Oh, boy. You know, somewhere to go, somewhere to meet their like new friends, friends from outside of school that they weren't allowed to be with day to day anymore. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, Liter literally saved like two years of mindset for these kids. Listen, we don't talk about it a whole lot. But we didn't fucking close the fuck down. Mm -mm. You sucked my fucking balls. Mm -hmm. We just kept op we just kept it open. We're a private company. We're a private gym. Mm -hmm. We kept it open for everybody that's a member. And that's how it fucking went. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, th all this shit that occurred fucked up a ton of teenagers because attempted suicide rate is through the fucking roof amongst young kids. Mm -hmm. And no matter what it was with us, it was keeping these kids involved in something and making sure that we did as much as we could to make sure that everything here was clean, everything sh was taken care of, 
We made sure we had protocols put in place for kids and parents to understand that safety was of the utmost concern, but more than anything, mental well-being for these children was number fucking one. Yeah. It was, it's, in that's like a crown jewel, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because it's, it's doing things in this community that take like a large group of people to make sure it occurs for a lot of good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was really cool. It, it kind of melted my mind because it, it was like three different groups, three different times, and they were all big as fuck. And I'm like, oh boy. It's crazy because a lot of people I went to high school with, mm -hmm. they all have kids in that, that three to six range now. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. We all got kids around the same age because that means going to be eight here soon. And I'm like, yep, I'll be Holy seeing everybody shit. for a long time. She's going to be eight. Dude, Adeline's a fucking young woman. She's 11 and a half or 14 and a half. All the sass. Just, she just, she's learning. She's, she's starting to understand the world and getting a, getting a grip on. She's kind of got, I think, regressed in some areas. <laughs> because of hormones but it's like it's like she's born it's it's like teenagers are in a sense like reborn like they have a new level of thinking and like they're relearning things like because i remember certain things she does i'm like man like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> and i'm like oh you're just like you're thinking for yourself now you're no longer like doing things because i told you to do them that way yeah you're doing them because you thought it was a good idea and then you have to realize it's not a good idea on your own oh boy so that means i could tell you to take three steps forward and one step to the right and you're going to take two steps forward and two steps to the right just to see what happens <laughs> yes that's going to occur a lot and i'm like fuck me oh man that's a whole level of pressure that i'm just not I'm not up for <laughs> Oh, no, I think it's fucking with me because it sits in because I watch it occur and I'm like, this is what people were talking about when they were parenting teenagers. Mm -hmm. They're like, enjoy them while they're young. And I'm like, fuck you, dickhead. My kid's gold. It's going to be way easier when they're older. This is easy. No. No, because they're thinking for themselves, which is a good thing. But you just hope you instilled enough in them. But I can't say anything because, bitch, the reason that we are successful is because of my stubbornness. You know what I mean? Just our willingness to be like, fuck you, gonna do it this way. I don't care if I have to run through 25 brick fucking walls, line them up. Doing it. I'm doing it. <clears throat> I don't care if I knock myself out 22 times, I'm getting through it. So it's pretty it's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Kids. Oh. Yeah. I just want to do cool shit, though. I like working hard. I want to do cool shit. Mm -hmm. Man, I got lots of messages over here. Me too. I got 13. I have 27. I know you do. You're away from your computer for two hours. And everyone forgets what, what they're doing. <laughs> what happens yeah i know i was gone for two days last week i thought fucking hell was freezing over that's why you go away so little little yeah you haven't said much over there tristan you don't really say much on this podcast you just kind of keep i can't yourself. i can well <clears throat> If you guys want me to. Yeah, you don't tune in, chime in too much. Yeah. I could say some stuff. Sometimes I just got to watch. I don't go overboard. Oh. Because my uh. brain will keep going, and I'll say the wrong thing. So, yeah. You know. You are a thinker. Yeah. Well, some – and I was listening, like, when you guys were talking about, like, thinking about fucked up shit, I was thinking about what I think about. Yeah. You got to chime in those times. Let us have it. I know, but I didn't have it. I don't chime in. Like, what have – if I would have said something, it's not interesting. Like, <laughs> I see Bob's twenty I don't, groundhogs on a golf course is. <laughs> yeah, he's talking. He's well. That's something. I mean, I just sit here and I just think, like, how the fuck? Like, if I press a button on a remote, how does the TV know that I'm hitting that button? <laughs> like, I think about that shit. <laughs> or like, why? Why is it that I have five toes on each foot? Why isn't there six or four? 
Man, That's the deep, stuff I do. You're a deep thinker. I know. Well, Cody's the same way. So so get this. Shit like that is every <laughs> single is, – is, again, I don't say every single, but a lot of guys think like that because whenever I get pretty baked up, I usually think about things that are so simple like – like it's kind of funny you said that if you look at somebody's ear long enough you're like man that is a fucking wild looking thing you got there on the side of your head mm -hmm. like so that captures all the sound that go in oh shit huh wonder why it's like that your ear doesn't look like mine right like they're very distinguishable mm -hmm. and why do we all have different fingerprints why are they all unique in their own way mm. so a, lot wise, you. a lot of whys a lot of whys but 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 again oh, I don't like, know, yeah. why like so identifiable so you mean i was identifiable fucking tens of thousands of years ago yeah what if you have the same fingerprint as like someone else from way way pro magden before? man no you don't that's what makes it fucking wild but so that's why impossible. why is it even on there there's so there's not only so many combinations there's probably one i probably match with at least one person yeah it's literally impossible i don't think so <laughs> what if they're dead or not finger they How just long? never were fingerprinted I wonder how long fingerprinting has been around. Like it's like starting the serial numbers over again. Not that long. Because they didn't think about like back then, they didn't really. I'm trying to think when they had it, but it was like if you were a serial killer in the 1930s and 40s, you're getting away with that shit and they're never going to find you. And then when they started adding fingerprints, fingerprints into the FBI database, and then they started doing like. Uh, 1902 you know, is the answer. Whenever they started fingerprinting people in the U.S. Yeah. Yes. But, no, you would still get away with murder. Yeah, but yeah. if you jump towns, you'd still get away with it, probably. Cities. Easily. For sure. Yeah. yeah. We just like playing a people. local database. It's not in a global database. They didn't have... We just got done saying they barely had fucking electricity. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, but I just think of it like this. Like, okay, there's only so many combinations of patterns and fingerprints, right? U.S., like the tracking numbers on packages, they have to recycle those numbers every 90 days. Is like, they're not the same thing. Like, there's tracking numbers for your packages, USPS, FedEx, whatever, that gets changed and deleted. Now, I'm not going to... I not thought those were unique. I'm not, nope. trying, I'm not trying to burst your bubble, okay, because that's a solid point. But we're talking about something that is so much... These are so much more unique than packaging numbers that that's what's wild. That's what I'm saying, like... like Tracking numbers were created recently. Like this was, we, we had, fingerprints started how fucking long ago? Like the, whenever we cre were created as man. Birth. I have no idea. Yeah, birth. But that's, so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so. What a horrible like, fucking analogy you used there for fingerprints. That? You used, that was a horrible analogy. What are you fucking. He didn't like it. Nice. Tracking He's on my numbers, side. Fuck UPS you, UPS tracking numbers. Are the, Comparing that to fingerprints? It's the same thing. There's only so many combinations. Name something better. There's snowflakes. nothing fingerprints. Snowflakes. Snowf what Every snowflake is different. You don't yes. know that. I do know that. What are you Look it up. I'm on his side. He knows. Which side are you picking, uh, Bob? I'm going to go Shane's side. Yep, good job. So now let's get into a huge argument. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to fist so fight hard. over this. <laughs> A vicious cockfight. <laughs> <laughs> we probably should do like some underground cockfighting. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. Um, but no, I, I again, that's a good point. Like, I so it, it was a terrible point. Snowflakes. There's definitely multiple snowflakes per. They're alike. Yeah. No. no. Yes, there is. No. no, there's never been found two snowflakes alike. It's because no. they melt too fast. No, yeah, you can't possibly do the research on that. Yeah. It's impossible. Nope. Never. Not one time in the history of Jay would know. unique snowflake findings. I found out yesterday Jay was a meteorologist and a volcanologist. Yeah. He Jay said, is what? Volcanologist? Like a volcano scientist? He studied hot shit in craters. I knew it. Like your mom's ass. <laughs> Our be literally our best camera guy is a meteorologist. Yeah, and volcanologist. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many things that, uh, like, like he brought up about, like, why do I have five fingers or four fingers and two thumbs? All these different things, and it's like we are so uneducated and curious, and it's it's wonderful to have these conversations. But it's like that's why 
the Joe Rogan podcast was so is so cool because you bring on all these different people. Because when it comes to us, I know we're very good at building businesses. Mm -hmm. I know I'm very good at just uh, I, I've been anything that, that I could do with my hands. Like when it came to involving the mind, uh, the hand to mind or mind to, mind to hand. Like I've been pretty good at. I just uh, found that I was very good at lifting weights and wanted to pursue bodybuilding and create that and building a business. This I have a business mindset. Very good at these things. Like when it comes to business, weightlifting, training, fucking top notch. When it comes to wondering why we have five, five fingers on each hand, that's an anomaly to me. Mm -hmm. And talking about it's fun. And I think that's what makes uh, a lot of this so entertaining. That's a good point. Yeah. Something I thought was stupid just turned into a conversation. So, I mean, and I think that with everything too, it's like, think about like cameras like how they're capturing like the present moment, like with just a lens, it blows my mind. I don't know. When I first started this job, I didn't even know how mailing was. I didn't know how mailing was. You put down an address. I'm like, well, how does this? How does it get there? I like the systems. The systems. I had no idea. Shane knows them very well. Mm -hmm. yeah, the amount suck. of shit in your mind is pretty fucking wild. Up in that noggin you got. Yeah. There's a lot of bullshit in there. There's a lot of bullshit in there. It kind of kicks out the fun stuff. I noticed that. <clears throat> I've like abandoned like some of those things mentally, like, like the good, uh, the like, fun stuff. Well, no, I have. No, I try I'm to. Mad. I try to hang on for dear life to those things. But no, like the whole like systems and stuff, like the shit Shane does. Like, yeah, that that was me mm -hmm. for for building the old business I was a part of. Yeah, like literally building the the fucking logistics, the financials, the marketing, the fucking how employees operated together, writing handbooks reprimanding these these people like that was me to a t yeah and i i mean that was not for me i was very very good at it i was very good at systems and i still kind of enjoy like aiding shane with those things sometimes too because i i'm fascinated with like fixing problems but that's a good point how he you said know? it's like just like even the systems like people don't understand how things uh, logistically how they work mm -hmm. and that's why we have always said be a hard working motherfucker and and double down on your strengths and make sure that you do the things that you enjoy or you're good at and you can add uh add um uh, value value that's what i was looking for to it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah like the act of like you guys placing an order and oh, it coming okay. into the website and then it going into all of our systems and then how many different hands see it and then it finally getting to the shipping department and then it's part of their process of picking 10 to 15 different orders at a time then it leaves their hand goes into their hand goes into a package gets sealed up gets put on a truck and then it's in the packaging company's hands whether it be whatever our courier it is with mm -hmm. and there's multiple different couriers mm -hmm. it's a fucking wild process sounds so easy and simple, but it it's is not. not. When you place an order, it sounds simple. Like, oh, yeah, I just go on a website and buy something. But you don't realize that the website is connected to our inventory system, which then attaches your payment. It attaches your tracking number. It goes into another system. From the website to this system, you need to – it brings over your first name, your last name, your address, your zip code, your credit card number. Your phone number. Phone number, yeah. Every little bit of information coded – to the system encrypted it's encrypted and it sucks and so that means that there has to be a system that's just made the the encrypted system that's just made for all of that sensitive data mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then also has to be one with the uh <clears throat> with the the shipping no god damn it the money oh the yeah the payment process the payment right? process so it goes it there's oh, these it's... things are happening immediately too yep. in seconds yep so, like, think about think about these things that happen in seconds. How many different steps for one for one thing, and then when you guys come on the fucking website on a Thursday night and line up ten thousand fucking people deep, and you want to wonder why we oversold seven units or something? It well, is wild, well, and, and and the thing is, it's gotten bigger and bigger, and our systems have gotten more robust, mm -hmm. more intense. The perfect the the the. the Everything that you guys have done to make these things work is wild, and nothing's ever perfect. We're always fixing stuff, and that's why. Well, we've we've went after we've went after some of the best fucking systems oh, yeah. on the fucking planet, and yep. they still aren't 
foolproof 100 percent and there's not one person not one system has said oh yeah zero problems ever there hasn't been one that's why we have customer service there has not been one it is crazy yep yeah i mean think how many i mean think how many fucking websites out there sell shit think how many people are out there just it's crazy yep we, we read a statistic fuck i forget i'm gonna undershoot it it was like how many millions of dollars amazon does every day oh oh it was fuck i forget what mike said i think it was like 890 million no way yeah no way dude you're full of shit bro i don't think no it, it's uh, Amazon sales per day reach about 385 million. That was in 2019, which is over 18.5 orders wait, per wait, second. Wait, 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 wait. Say that number again from 2019. How many per day? Here it is. I have as of 2022. There you 2022. Go. Amazon makes over 638 million each day. In 38 million what? Dollars. Doll hairs. Six hundred eighty-three million dollars in revenue as of twenty twenty-two per day. If you do the math, uh, yes. If you do the math, Amazon makes an average of seventy-three hundred dollars each second. Four hundred forty-three thousand per minute. Twenty-six point six million per hour. Averages seventeen point six billion per month. Holy fuck. Bro, those numbers are gigantic, but think about it broken down into how many items and well, then how many packages and then how many customers. How many brands you got to deal with. How many warehouses, how many fucking inventory systems, how many... How many people just have to touch an item. Yep. And you want to wonder why your fucking shit isn't always two-day. It's a miracle. <laughs> That's crazy. And the fact that these dudes have doubled their fucking worth since the beginning of the pandemic is the scariest thing in the world to me. Mm -hmm. Doubled your wealth. Everything it took them a lifetime to build, they doubled in two years. My, I mean, my heart's beating faster thinking about that. Because mm -hmm. I know what goes into what we do. Can you imagine how that changes you as a person? That place ain't cool to work. Dude, it was a fucking bookstore when you started it. Yeah. He's like he is. Him and Elon, they're like fucking, they're like villains. Like villains from movies. They look like it, too. I love Elon. I mean, how, uh, uh, you can't hate on either of them. What am I supposed to do, fucking hate people that literally created fucking empires that run the world? Amazon runs this country. A Amazon has become Amazon, dude. It's, it, it's, it's, it's like the word fuck. It's a, it's a verb. It's a noun. It's a proper noun. Mm -hmm. It's an adjective. If you name it, it is it. Mm -hmm. You can use it any way. Amazon runs all of our shit. We don't even know. Web yeah. servers, yes. internet. That's what I mean. They 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 do everything because the guy's like, yeah, he just he, AWS. My God. Every single time he was like, no, let's do it ourselves. Yeah, no, nope, let's it do out. it ourselves. Oh yeah, we'll just get the guy that that created it. We'll pay him. Fuck it. Bro, it's the only online retailer that you can't use PayPal to check out. Are you kidding me? Because he fucking hates Elon. However, on your own fucking website, if we wanted to, you, we could allow you guys to log in through your Amazon account on allamericanroughneck.com and pay your bill. We can use Amazon as a payment method. That's insane. Wild. Mm -hmm. this, the fucking sheer balls on people. Is Bro, that's that big dream shit. That's when everyone, everyone at the Amazon team, when Big Jeff was like, "Hey, we're gonna do all our own internal uh, payment processing," mm -hmm. they're like, "The fuck we are." He's like, "Yes, we are. This is what we're doing. Figure it out. I'll be back." He spent a billion dollars on it, mm -hmm. and now it's making him multiple billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That's wild, dude. Big Jeff. Big Jeff. What's up? He's in shape now too. <laughs> Big Jeff is a fucking villain. He's a villain. He is. I mean, look at him. He's all fucking, he's on a little bit of TRT. Mm -hmm. Fucking. Fountain of youth. Oh, man. 
Like, I wonder if he buys stuff like I do. Probably. So. But, like, I don't know. So this is where it gets weird. Like, where and and like, these elitists that have this. Like, dude, what do you do whenever you're, like, literally one of the most powerful rich people in the entire world? Ever. Well, Jeff built a fucking clock in Texas. Listen, that's a fucking joke. He just did that probably because he hides people in that canyon or cave or something in there. The clock's just a facade. <laughs> yeah, I do believe that shit. Because, dude, people do fucked up shit whenever they get into places of power. Like, dude, people do fucked up shit whenever you give them a little bit of power. You give a little, you give people a little bit of power in a local community, and all of a sudden they think they're the fucking greatest thing since sliced bread. Imagine actually being the most powerful fucking person in the world. I'm okay. I don't want that. I don't want that neither. I'm just saying in general. I just want my name on a water tower. That's what I want. Well, you should build O'Shea. one. You're going to no, build one? O'Shea Brothers. <laughs> That would be fucking cool. Yeah, I would like it. Maybe we should just buy a farm and like put a water, put a fake, my, wa- put put a my fake own water up. tower on it. <laughs> Could probably get a used one somewhere. <laughs> that would be cool. Party at the Moon Tower. Yeah, all the kids would be like, "Yeah, we're going over to Dotrick Field." <laughs> yeah. Why we call it that? Well, this dude just put a fake water tower there one year. There's nothing in it. He's fucking been dead for like 25 years, but he's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he smoked weed here, he used man. To smoke weed. He used to come up here and smoke weed all the time. <laughs> dude was a legend. You awesome. You awesome. Oh, my God. It's funny. Bury a bunch of fucking shit in the field. Bunch of fucked up shit. Fucking money. Money, old pictures. Yep. Bong. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Man, that'd be pretty fun. Holy shit, we found Bobby D's bong. There'd be things like all over this field. Like, people be digging stuff up. Yep. Does anyone do like those time capsule things anymore? Well, that's all I was thinking of is, it, I mean, whenever you were a teenager, that was always fun. Like, go out to the field, fucking smoke a bunch of weed with your buddies. Drink beers, camp out. I mean, back to Full House, they did that on the show. Oh, yeah? Danny, Joey, and Jesse, they they buried something when they were in elementary school. They Jesse, were digging up? Jesse put his hair dryer in there. Yeah, they did dig it up. I'm pretty sure I still have something buried mm. somewhere. I never buried anything. No comment. <laughs> 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 All right, good shit. Everybody, thank you for listening as always. We've moved the podcast to the HWMF podcast on YouTube, its own channel now. Please make sure you go subscribe. Um, and Tristan, thank you for your input today. You're very welcome. I'm excited. I'm still mad about the snowflakes. Yeah. Fuck you. I think we got a lot. I think, I think we got a lot going on. I think we're going to have him have his own little segment here. Let's do it. Five minute thoughts with Tristan. So I like that. Call it Tristan Talk. Tristan Talk. Yeah. With an Maybe o. just give you the fucking show next Raw dogging huh? with Tristan. Raw <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's we're doing that. That's uh-huh. a segment. Yeah, going to be next time on the HW podcast. Raw dogging with Tristan. <laughs> Everybody, thank you very much. Have a good day and keep being good motherfuckers. Love you guys.